Fred Harvey was the first national hotelier. You know, now we have Hiltons and Hyatts and Marriott's families like that. The first one was Fred Harvey. He made a deal with the Santa Fe Railroad that he would operate all the hotels and restaurants for the Santa Fe, and it became a national phenomenon. In his day, he was the most famous hospitality person in the country. In the late 1800s, when the railroad was coming through the Southwest, hospitality was terrible, right? So they would serve food to somebody, and then they would scrape it off the plate, and they'd serve it to somebody else, right? <laughs> and the service was atrocious, and you'd only have a few minutes to eat. Fred Harvey changed all of that. He introduced linen and crystal and china and fine service. Can you explain a little bit the vastness of the, the Harvey Hotels? His deal with the Santa Fe Railway, of course, it was originally the Atchison and Topeka, because it was just going to run there. And then they figured, okay, Atchison, Topeka, and Santa Fe, maybe we can get all the way to the Southwest. And of course, by the time they got to the Southwest, they figured, why stop in Santa Fe? Let's go to Los Angeles. So eventually, it went all the way from Chicago to Los Angeles, and all the way down to El Paso, and all the way to Mexico. So. The Santa Fe Railway was, of course, one of the great railroad systems in the whole country. And they had not just the freight, but hotels and restaurants all over the country, from Chicago, actually from Cleveland to Los Angeles. It was a huge business. Mm -hmm. In many ways, you're following in the footsteps of Fred Harvey. <laughs> well, in a, very, well, in a little okay. tiny way. So, so you've taken on um, refurbishing and revitalizing the La Casanera Hotel yes. in Las Vegas, New Mexico. Right. Tell us about that and that right. endeavor. So Santa Fe Railway, built some of the greatest structures in the country, hired some of the greatest architects and designers in the country. Most of them are gone. Mm -hmm. After World War II, the Haiti of the railroad was over, the automobile took over, it was the interstate railroad system in the 50s, and these buildings got torn down. Mm -hmm. Like here in Albuquerque, the Alvarado, that incredible centerpiece of downtown Albuquerque was torn down in the 70s, right? So we restored the La Posada in Windsor, Arizona, and now we're doing the Castaneda in Las Vegas, New Mexico, and the Plaza in Las Vegas, New Mexico, and the Legal Tender in Lamy. So we're trying to connect all these great old railroad towns and great old railroad buildings back together again. And why do it? These are some of the greatest buildings ever constructed in the Southwest. Las Vegas, New Mexico was the biggest city in New Mexico in the 1900s. It was bigger than Albuquerque, richer than Santa Fe. And so there's this incredible architectural legacy. The Castaneda was Fred Harvey's first trackside hotel. Mm -hmm. So before the Castaneda, which was 1898, Fred Harvey was doing food service on the trains. But in Las Vegas, he decided to get into the hotel business. So that was the beginning of this whole hospitality empire. And this building in 1898 was the first of the Spanish colonial revival buildings uh, in New Mexico. And it's absolutely magnificent. And it was abandoned for 70 years and was literally falling apart when we bought it. Why are the objects within the Skip Gentry collection so important? Fred Harvey was forgotten about, right? That whole history and some of the great architects and artists that Harvey worked with, like Mary Coulter, who was America's most important, most influential woman architect, worked her entire career for Fred Harvey and the Santa Fe Railway. They produced Fred Harvey thousands, hundreds of thousands of objects, right? And they became the biggest purveyor of Native American arts and crafts mm -hmm. in the country. Mm -hmm. And it was all forgotten about, right? The Harvey Company dissolved in the 70s, was sold to Zantara. And so Skip Gentry started collecting this stuff 40 years ago. and when people didn't care about it, people forgot about it, and he created the largest collection in the world of Fred Harvey objects and artifacts. Objects from the past is often the only thing that we have to tell those stories, right? So the people who lived those lives in many cases are gone, although there are some real Harvey girls still living in New Mexico. Otherwise, all we have left are these buildings, most of which are torn down, and these incredible objects, right? So the Fred Harvey Company commissioned and bought huge collections of Native Americana, mm -hmm. right? When American thought culture came from Europe, right at the turn of the century, all of your grand buildings have got Greek columns in front, right? Harvey Company says, no, we've got this culture in the Southwest. And he commissioned all these artists and architects to interpret that history through these objects, which is part of the Skip Gentry collection. 
That was a really important legacy of Fred Harvey. It was economic and cultural development. What is the significance of those individual pieces? Harvey was doing storytelling, right? So what he wanted to do was to create an authentic experience of the Southwest. Because at that time, of course, the Southwest was not so much populated. The Santa Fe Railway was also a real estate company. They wanted to bring people to the Southwest. And, and so they wanted to create partly fantasy, partly reality of what the Southwest was like, which was Native Americans and cowboys and Indians and all of that kind of story, and market that to people on the East Coast, right? So that people would take the train and say, we want to discover this exotic land of New Mexico. What is the significance in the story behind the China that was used? Fred Harvey hired Mary Coulter to design China for the Super Chief, which was the deluxe train that used to go between Los Angeles and Chicago. So back in the day, if you had money, you would take the Super Chief. But instead of Harvey making some European pattern with flowers on it or something, he hired Mary Coulter to make a new China. And she went and studied the Mimbres Indians, who are the most important potters in the Southwest, right? And the Mimbres are long gone, but they created this incredibly beautiful funerary ware. So Coulter went and studied all of the Mimbres pottery and reinterpreted it in a kind of Art Deco style and made all of this what was called Mimbres ware for the Santa Fe Railway Super Chief. In what ways is this still a living history? Well, New Mexico is still the land of enchantment, right? And a lot of the imagery that we have that tells the story of the Southwest is from Fred Harvey and from those days. It's just people don't know that anymore. Like all the tiles school and all the great architecture, like La Fonda in Santa Fe, this was all Fred Harvey's work. It's still all around us. Modern systems of quick service, great efficiency, all that's from Fred Harvey. I believe that people crave meaning and a sense of place. And so much of our, of our modern commodity culture is just that. It's meaningless and it's placeless, right? So if you go to Walmart, it's the same thing here as it is in Los Angeles as it is in any other town. So these buildings and this art gives you a sense of connection so if you go into the Castaneda, it's like a time machine, right? You go into this building and you're transported to this authentic New Mexico experience. And that is so meaningful to so many people. Even if they don't know why, it's like they know that there's something special going on. It's ineffable, it's very difficult to describe. A really great poem or a really great painting gives you a sense of connection to something that's much larger than yourself. It's a connection to history, a connection to community, a connection to place, and you get that through these Fred Harvey buildings. And that was always the intention, is to create this authentic experience of the Southwest.